you don't give a shit about oh, me. Well, All you care is about I'll you like, and you being okay and you screwed up in your dumb head. Wow. Wow. What an ass. No, you're the ass. This week's 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After was full of drama, leaving the fate of some couples hanging in the balance. Let's start with Sophie, who met Rob at his apartment for the first time in two months and was considering moving back in, but wanted to see what he had to say. When she got there, he had flowers and a handwritten note, but it wasn't a love letter. It was a to-do list for her moving back in. Washing off dishes before putting in the sink. Putting dirty clothes in bin. Put makeup and hair products back after use. Don't get mad at me when you don't get what you want. Be patient and I'll likely work it out for you. Remember that we're trying to move forward and don't focus on the past. Sophie was upset about his priorities and told him her tidying up was the least of their problems. Our priorities up here, my being a little messy with my makeup and stuff is like down there. This is a piece of some of the bigger problem. Yes, the we big have bigger problem, problems. I left because of you. I found out all these tags, all these other girls on your phone. I didn't leave because I was messy. Why can't you just clarify for me what I can do? Because I don't want to have these interactions because Stop these online interactions cheating on me. Stop controlling me. Sophie decided it was not the right day to move back in, so she left. They later met up for a date at a country dance bar. And while there, Sophie revealed that her friend Callum would be visiting from England, and she wanted Rob to come meet him with her friends. They're a part of my life, so obviously I want you to make an effort with them. I'm a nice guy. Debatable. To who? Find me one person who, who thinks I'm not a nice guy. Me. Besides my you. My mom, my friends, everyone that I know. It's just because you tell them I'm not a nice guy. No. Well, Callum's going to meet you and he can decide for himself. And the way things left off, Rob was not happy about Callum's visit. What does so, this guy look like? He's a British guy. He has brown hair. <laughs> Is he ugly? He's not ugly. So You are my type. Callum doesn't look like you. If this dude doesn't look like, like Gollum, then I don't like it. Meanwhile, Kobe and Emily are continuing their visit to Cameroon. They drove to meet Kobe's family, and it went great, with Kobe's dad giving a special gift to Emily's parents. He's giving this in honor of his dad. I mean, I never thought of a day like this, like it was going to happen, but I'm so happy. Later, Kobe's dad told Emily that this trip was the perfect time for them to get married traditionally. We're going to get married again. Tous mes enfants se marient traditionnellement d'abord. That is a blessing that comes from the ancestors. C'est pareil, rien que la mort. So the only thing that can separate you guys can be death. The next day, Kobe told Emily and her family about the pre-wedding traditions, including the knock door. So this basically is to introduce ourselves that we're coming to get married to your daughter, and then you tell us your demand. You have to make a list of what you want, right, yeah. babe? What do you need from us in order to get married to your daughter? Did you ever think we were going to get a dowry for one of our daughters? <laughs> I mean. Yeah, how much do you think I'm worth? I mean, how? what's, my, what's the dowry yeah. for me? Well, more than one plantain. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we should be giving them money. Here, <laughs> take her. Meanwhile, Mahmoud has flown to the U.S. to be with Nicole. On his first full day in California, she took him to the Santa Monica Pier, and he told her about how he's adjusting slowly and missing his family. Because to be with you is the right thing, to be with my family is the right thing too. So it's not about trying to run, it's just like, it's hard. I totally understand. I did this before, I don't, and it was, it was hard on me, but for different reasons. So if there's anything that I can do to make your experience better or your life better, let me know. As they were walking, they talked more about how he was feeling, but then things took a sharp turn. You like that? Eh? The girl in purple. Why do you talk about him? And you know what I saw him. Stop dead in your tracks to f there. Stop what? It's like... Well, I saw what happened. You know what, like, if you want an Arab woman, you should go get one. Like, why well, I'm here now. Nicole followed that by telling him he could fly straight home. After that little incident, though, Mahmoud, I'm putting your ass back on the plane. You go what? back to Egypt, I don't care. What?
If you want to be a little womanizer, you can go back to Egypt. Yeah. Okay, f I, I will, I'm done. I'm not going okay, to okay, now. Okay, okay, good, good. Okay. Big Ed and Liz, meanwhile, are less than eight weeks away from their wedding day and are working on improving their communication. They hit a bit of a speed bump when they argued over each of them making a mess in the kitchen. And Liz's daughter, Riley, was the one to ease the tensions. Are you going to smile? Are you going to clean your mess? Or let this ruin your day? Will you stop ruining it? Either oh, relax and enjoy, brat. You're being a little brat. clean your mess, or go you're back to bed. You're going to be a little brat. And you're pouting and you're stop. ruining the event. You stop being a brat because you're ruining it. What's up? What you guys just start talking about it and there's no clean up everything after we're done. That's a great idea. Later, Liz brought Riley, her mom, and her grandma to go wedding dress shopping. And Liz found the dress of her dreams. Liz's mom, who hasn't been Ed's biggest fan, told her she wanted to clear the air with him before the big day. And Liz hoped she wouldn't be too hard on him. <laughs> I just, I'm hard enough on him enough, and so is everybody else, but I just, I don't want you to be hard on him. I'm not going to Even be Even though hard. he knows that he's, he knows he's given you a reason to be upset. I just... But he doesn't know that I know the good things that he does, too. Ashley and Manuel went to go check out some motorcycles together, but Manuel made it clear that he's looking to drive solo when he visits his extended family. Esto es para fariros. Pero quien dice que quiero andar contigo en mi moto? ¿Qué? He said he wants space. Yo pienso que estás haciendo un poquito antipático. No es antipático. Un poco. Por eso necesito una motocicleta. Puedo ir a visitar a toda la familia. Salir a hacer mis cosas yo. Ashley felt this was another instance of Manuel not wanting to include her in his life, and she later brought it up with him. Yo quiero entrar en tu familia más. Déjame mi espacio. Todo necesitamos. Tú tienes tu espacio, déjame mi espacio también. Yo quiero ir contigo. Necesito ir contigo. Por favor, déjame conseguir un poquito más cómodo. Manuel agreed to introduce her to them. Later that night, as Ashley gave him a spiritual bath to help with their communication, he expressed some hesitations about his Catholic family finding out she's a witch. It really is upsetting that Manuel never told his family that I'm a witch. Like, he wants me to lie to his family about who I am. And I find it a little insulting because it is a huge part of my identity. Me tomó mucho tiempo adaptarme a la brujería de Ashley. No estoy seguro si que mi familia estará muy abierto a saber sobre esto de Ashley. Meanwhile, Gino and Jasmine are reeling from the bad news they got from an immigration lawyer who said that because Gino didn't include Jasmine's kids on her K-1 visa, it might take up to two years to bring them from Panama to the States. Like you omitting my kid's name, just f it up for us. I feel bad that I missed one, one thing. Do you know, you didn't miss one, one thing. You missed yeah, one that thing. thing, the most important part of the process. Yeah, it was important. Jasmine argued that he should hire a lawyer to do the paperwork moving forward, but Gino was against it, saying it was too costly and he would do it himself. And Jasmine was upset about his priorities. When it comes to, to have my kids here with me, Gino, like, money means nothing. No. No, I'm not. I no. can't believe this I'm from you, Gino. What, I'm gonna what, do kind of, what kind of evil person you are? No, I'm not evil. I'm not evil at all. Do you love I've been me? busting my ass to get you to this country. I get no appreciation for what I've done. So what do you that want me, me? What do you want me to do? To make a study of you because you brought me here? No, but all I get is a lot of bull uh, negative is, feedback is for something that Gino, I busted Gino, my ass Gino. for. The argument got extremely heated, with Jasmine saying she didn't think their marriage could survive this. I wish I have never met you. You ruined my. I want to get divorced from you. I don't want to yeah. be married to you, and I'm going. Back to Panama. It ended with Gino leaving the restaurant and Jasmine in tears. I have never seen this side of Gino. I want to go back to Panama. Gino's not a good husband to me, and he's not going to be a good dad. I don't want to have kids with him anymore.